Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Fall is definitely in the air. We got a little bit of rain last night and it's a little bit on the cooler side today. Leaves are turning more by the day. And I've got another, another sorry, viewer request episode to do. Um, question was left by Phil's F. Do you and Senior have any plans for putting a blade on something larger like a D6? And um, I guess short answer is no. But the long answer is actually rather interesting and it encompasses some information that from reading the comment section over the years, I think there are, is a lot of people that are not aware of it. Um, of course, we have the three cylinder versions of the 2H series D6 and RD6. And the narrow one here, which I'm not gonna bother taking the cover off of today because it's, it's too much bending and bungeeing and, and whatnot, but this one actually came with the blade on it. Um, here are four of the old attaching studs for the trunnion bracket. And we've got a lot of holes that are in the track frame up here where uh, cylinder brackets actually surrounded the tracks right here, blocked you out of two thirds of the engine on each side and housed, or I should say held, mounted the cylinders. There was a control on the fender, a live power pump on the front with piping that went back. It's not on there anymore. And down here in the leaves, uh, slated for scrap, is the uh, LaPlante Choate angle blade that was on the narrow RD6. Super huge, heavy duty, everything about it. Um, yeah, it's, it's so massively overbuilt. The C-frame is uh, ridiculous. The blade moldboard is equally as ridiculous. Um, the reason I'd never do anything with this anymore is that someone has worn the cutting edge mounting all the way through the frog and they've went and just welded cutting edge to the bottom of it and the rest of it's got some issues as well. Um, these track chains, our old D2 chains, they're scheduled for scrap as well. But yeah, the big central pivot right here, everything's just so ridiculously huge and overweight for a 2H series D6 and the condition on top of it, I'm never gonna put this back onto that tractor. So back into the shop for the story time portion of the episode. We'll get this closed behind us. Still moving rather slow, that's all right. Doctor's orders and as usual, as soon as the space stops being used for its primary function, it becomes a catch-all. We've got a wood splitter in here. That's all right, seniors getting that ready to go, so. Howdy H, I miss you buddy. Um, so for the uh, reasons why we don't plan on putting a blade on one of our D6s. Get to my familiar spot back here. Most people aren't aware of this, but for all of the years pretty much prior to World War II, Caterpillar predominantly designed its tractors to be drawbar units only and that's why you see up here this vintage porcelain sign says caterpillar farm tractors that's right um in fact you needed to get up into the um d7 and d8 size range of tractors in the old um dealer literature before dozer blades were even mentioned and even at that caterpillar was not the one building them um all through World War II, CAT had agreements with, oh, come on, dude, point it at yourself. CAT had agreements with the federal government that they would supply the tractors and the Latorno company would supply the dozers for all of the military contract um, machines. And there was a bit of a falling out between Caterpillar and Latorno uh, late in the war production years. And Caterpillar looked at all of the contracts that Latorno was getting and all of the business that they were doing, outfitting their tractors with dozer blades, with power control winches, uh, power control units for towed scrapers, cable scrapers, things of the like. The Cater Caterpillar decided they wanted to get in on that business as well. So it wasn't until after World War II and the tractors that came with that time period that Caterpillar even started building them to be really good dozing and grading machines. 
And we'll take this book as an example. This is an old William H. Ziegler dealer equipment and supplies catalog number 158. I believe it's from 1937 to 1938, judging by the models that are showcased in here. And going through, you can come on. We, we were going to be so slick at this. All right. That's the page I want to start at. Going through here. Uh, yeah, they showcased a lot of the Caterpillar, like, implement and option pieces like this little power lift on the back of the 22 you can get full side curtains and orchard fenders um, on the r4 line you see the pto r5 you see the belt pulley you see engine side guards going over to d4 and d6 you can see we got the wood cab we got all the different uh, track pad options but none of these factory supplied pieces for this pre-World War II era included dozer blades. You had to go much further back into the Ziegler catalog and here you finally start seeing where the dozer blades are and these are the plant show. This is the hydraulic road builder for Caterpillar tractors which is the uh, the road builder style blade is what the narrow RD6 had on it and then the plant show high lift bulldozer that's on a D8 pretty much outfitted the same way. And then back here a little bit further, here is the Letourneau angle dozers, which were the most popular of the time period, being all cable controlled because you could also take those cables, run them to the back and operate a, uh, a cable scraper. You have these Letourneau uh, rooters and rippers and these two wheel cranes, all, all those things were operated from cable. So cable was pretty much still king pre-World War II. So now we delve into even more literature that does a really good job of illustrating the difference between the pre-World War II era D6 and the post-World War II era D6. So the pre-World War II era D6, much more built to be just a dedicated drawbar tractor that for the most part you pointed in a straight line and you went in a straight line until you got to the end of the field, you did a turn and you did a straight line all the way back. Uh, they were not nearly as smooth as the later models. Of course, the earlier ones were still the uh, slow turning, very large bore, three cylinder diesel engines, all torque, but they would hammer, they would vibrate. The post-war era D6s, we start getting into the 4R, 5R series, and like this, the 8U, 9U series, completely different diesel engine. It's a smaller bore, six cylinder unit, runs faster, runs considerably smoother, even has better power output. The transmission on the pre-war era D6s, well, we had fixed forward speeds with a dedicated reverse, um, non-boosted steering clutch levers. It was a handful to drive. Um, Post-war series D6s now, we had still uh, dedicated speeds in the transmission, but they added a reverser lever. So much more user-friendly to do a lot of back and forth operation like dozing because every time you had to back up you just release the clutch change your uh, forward reverse lever to the uh, different position re-engage the clutch you left the transmission shifter alone you could pick a gear and go forwards and backwards in that gear also these had fully boosted uh, steering levers so just with a couple fingers you could pull those steering levers and release a clutch whereas this pre-war era D6, it was a significant pull because you were manually overcoming all of the clutch pack spring tension to get that lever all the way back. And it doesn't sound like very much, but if you put both of these tractors head to head in a dozing competition, at the end of the day, you're going to be much less fatigued on this, you know, really nice forward reverse tractor, power boosted steering, nice wide comfortable seat, smooth running engine over this one that was very much, like I said, made just to pick a direction and go. And the final major improvement was made in the undercarriage. The pre-war models had a bit of a shorter five roller track frame. Post-war models, they stretched the track frame out, went to six lower rollers, and it gave you a much flatter, much more stable and longer footprint where the track was on the ground. And it was much, much more suited to dozing. Anything with a shorter track base is going to have a lot more um, up and down pitch. Uh, it's going to be a lot harder to control when you get into like a good grade or a cut. These tractors post-war, like I said, were purpose-built to be not so much a drawbar machine, but a dozing machine. Whereas pre-war, this was made to pull. 
And going further back in the post-war brochure, you can see here where Caterpillar was designing and building all of their cable control units, the different dozer blades for D6, D7, D8. This was all cable control on this page, following page, some cable control. We start getting into the hydraulic control dozers for the D6, the D7, the D8. Like I said, we were purpose building these machines by this point in time to be dozing tractors. And out here one final time to the old narrow RD6 to illustrate why this chassis was much better suited to drawbar pulling than it was to dozing. Look at the spacing of everything. You see how the engine sticks out further than the front of the tracks. All right, so we've got the main leaf spring that holds the front of the tractor up that runs down in here about this area right here. So the majority of that engine weight is in front of your suspension point right there. And you look at the back end, of course, is going to be a bit lighter than the engine, but look at how much further the final drives come out behind the back of the transmission case. And of course the tracks then are staggered further out as well. So you can tell the natural balance of this tractor in this Unloaded state is biased a little bit toward the front But when you put a load on the back at the draw bar and you come under a heavy pull the weight transfer is going to Even out because you're pulling heavy on the back the nose is wanting to climb Resisting that load pulling it and what that does it evenly distributes the entire weight of the machine plus the weight of the load firmly on the undercarriage and the tracks from front to back under the machine, you get your best traction, you get your best handling, you will do your best steering and maneuvering. Whereas if you put a dozer blade on this tractor right here, because of the slightly shorter tracks, tracks, sorry, the weight balance bias towards the front of the engine because we're expecting to have a load back there to even things out. There's not a load, but you've got all this added weight of a dozer blade up front, especially that huge C-frame, the plant shot angle dozer that was on this you go and raise that dozer blade and back up, you've put even more of your weight bias further out ahead of the tracks. And it makes these tractors just stand right on their nose. The prior owner of this D6 said that that blade was way too heavy for this tractor. And that when you would raise the blade and back up, it would stand primarily on the front idlers and maybe the front track roller at the base. Everything else from there on back was up off of the ground as it was backing up. So that's, Another reason, or I should say the final nail in the coffin, as to why we will not be throwing any dozer blades on any of our RD6s. Um, that and I don't think I've ever seen a wide gauge dozer blade that would fit the wide RD6 that I've got down here. Um, aftermarket manufacturers did make some rear mounted winches for these tractors, but again, there are so few of those left and there were so few of them sold compared to later cable control units that it's, it's basically like good luck finding one of those as well. So for our D6s, we are happy just to keep them as draw bar tractors. That's really the only way I want to use them. And it would take me getting a, like I said, a redesigned post-war era 4R, 5R series D6 or 8U, 9U series D6 to want to have a D6 with a dozer blade on it. And like we went through already, it's a much, much more capable and better suited platform and chassis to accept a dozer blade than these early pre-war models. So that's the long part of the no as to why we won't be putting any blades on any of our D6s. And really, you look at a Caterpillar D2, it's pretty much the same design and layout as this pre-war D6. In all reality, a D2 probably should not have a dozer blade put on it at all. Um, and we've got three D2s here that all have dozer blades, but they're a much better draw bar tractor than they are for dozing. The dozer blade just upsets the balance of the machine. It, and it, it makes it, you know, you lose on performance all around, but that's going to conclude the episode. Thank you for watching everyone. Uh, keep the viewer requests and the questions coming. I will answer as many of them in video format as I can. Thanks again, everybody.